in perspective um a lot of uh, start planning for the plan b on your end so that you know you don't um i mean again it's easier said than done i was in that same situation where i had to start planning for a plan b uh and not always thinking about you know it will be a bad option um i always discuss it with my family around you know we can build something you know in a different place so have that confidence in yourself anybody who is listening to the podcast right now welcome to uh, another exciting episode of data talk with doers i'm your host neema and today we have a true data powerhouse with us please give a warm welcome to karan ambas a seasoned data professional with an over a decade of industry experience Karan holds the prestigious title of a Level Three Certified Data Tableau expert, and is a featured mem- mentor at Syria. Currently, he is building his data magic as a senior data digital marketing analyst at Highmark Health. And get ready to dive deep into the world of data analytics from our guest today. So, Karan, thanks a lot. It's an ab- absolute pleasure to have you here uh, today. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you, Neema, for having me, and and really looking forward to the discussion today. Ah, uh, so Karan, uh, I I did read go through your LinkedIn profile. You have a lot of things mentioned, and uh, also you have a very good followers. Ah, uh, wherein you share your own insights. So, however, we want to know a little bit of your background. Could you please uh, reiterate your background? Ah, uh, sure, sure. So, um. i can start off with uh, you know so my undergrad was in computer science it was back in 2011 um and then i worked for around close to 5 years um in india and then chose to do my masters from uh, carnegie mellon here in pittsburgh in 2018 and since then so i kind of pivoted into analytics um in 2018 post my grad school um and have been working in the bi you know space since then uh, most of my experience has been in healthcare um post post my grad school yeah oh okay fine fine so uh, you said you have been working on your uh, your domain was most likely in uh, in healthcare so can you uh, share a personal uh, career success story or any projects that you are proud of uh mm-hmm. based with with your experience yeah yeah sure um so a lot of my work um after i joined hymark uh after my grad school back in 2018 um one of the projects that we did was um you know around utilizing tableau and all tricks as a uh, tool um so i was lucky to be at the at at a place where i was part of a initiative where we were looking at building something which was enterprise wide uh, so, so this was the first time that was something being utilized at such a large scale so i think that is one of the things that i have discussed with a lot of people around you know how you can have a wider impact with um utilizing and saving a lot of time for the business essentially i think what it boils down to is that ability to you know save time and effort for people um and i think without going into too much details there i think that was one of the pieces where um you know i think it was very very helpful and it's still being utilized so that makes me happy uh, a lot of people reference that back to me so i think that that is definitely one of the uh you know high point in my work as an analyst yeah okay so that is actually great to know because uh, i've been a data i've prepared i've also worked on so, several tableau dashboards and the mm. the point that you mentioned that this is still being used because a yeah. lot of <laughs> dashboards are not being used in the and uh, the organization yep, yep. after <laughs> yeah and that's probably like an 80 20 ratio there too right like a lot of those 80% of i mean it's good for exploration also but if you want to have that kind of uh, you know uh, people utilizing it and things like that it takes a lot of effort so you right yeah <laughs> so uh, karan you mentioned you have done your masters in carnegie mellon and it's a it's a prestigious university but nowadays uh, people uh, don't have to do masters to get into data uh, mm. uh, field so uh, for those people who are taking up boot camps or linkedin learning uh, courses what are your advices in in order to stand out from those people who are doing masters any any advices mm-hmm. on that yeah and that's a great question uh, whenever people uh, kind of sometimes assume that that is uh, probably the most 
uh, you know, usual path for somebody to enter into data science. I think it's, it's just a matter of where you are. Uh, personally, I was at a place where I didn't know that, you know, this was something that I was interested in. So it just happened to be something that I worked with a business analyst in my work before my grad school. And then during the grad school, I kind of developed that interest. So developing an interest in analytics can come from anywhere. Um, you know, as you said, it can be grad school, even not even undergrad right now, like a lot of people who don't have any form of degree with them are building more and more in this space. So I think a couple of things that stands out to me and I'm looking at, you know, constantly at my LinkedIn feed around people uh, building up great portfolios. And I saw one of your posts also about, you know, how important it is to, uh, you know, just showcase your skills in a setting where it's, I mean, it, it's hard to get real uh, close to the real world, but as much as you can, I think it's, it's better to build a portfolio rather than just talking about it in your resume. Uh, and the other piece, I think, is is the piece where I mentioned about how much time and effort you can save businesses. Again, it's hard to do that in a theoretical setting, um, but if it is something that's uh, you know closer to what you are interested in or let's say somebody is interested in finance or healthcare, if you have a couple of projects in your portfolio which you are really, really, um, you know, very passionate about, it will reflect in that discussion with a recruiter or even, you know, not just a recruiter, any any form of discussion will be very, very, um, you know, helpful for them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that totally makes sense. So uh, now that you told uh, mentioned about portfolios, uh, that is a, a a lot of questions coming up uh, in in lot of LinkedIn feeds is that people talk about portfolios, but however, uh, people who are starting into data field, they are unaware of what kind of domain they have to uh, pitch in to develop these projects. So, uh, do they have to develop? I uh, mean, yeah, and that, that's again a good question. Uh, it's very hard. I remember when when I was starting out, uh, in, and sometimes still I am in you realize that, you know, how do you decide on that? So I think, and I was thinking about it, is it's it's a, it's important to keep it to, let's say, two to three verticals where people are interested in. So let's say you have, uh, you know, somebody has that interest in finance and healthcare. Uh, so it never hurts to have, you know, both of these focus uh, on your projects. Maybe you have, you know, a couple of, projects with finance and a couple of them for healthcare. Uh, now, going beyond that, I think it becomes more, you know, it dilutes the purpose of having that portfolio if you have something with sports, one, something with e-commerce, and then healthcare and finance. So, yeah, I think it would be great for people to consider maybe two of them and just keep a focus there uh, would be my suggestion, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. That is a great uh, tip, uh, Karan, because even I have this own question because a lot of senior people, like for people who are transitioning, they could be the uh, mid mid level people, right? So they mm -hmm. already have some experience on a domain, and uh, like you said, they could go into that domain or pitch into an another another domain rather than getting diluted. It could be kind of confusing. So that's a, a great tip. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. In addition to portfolio, um, uh, another very important thing is resume. So um, what are the tips that you would uh, provide to the uh, data aspirants uh, in uh, in kind of understanding what, what is needed? Because um, currently I am kind of understanding what are the different resume formats in different countries. In India, it's different. In US, it's different. So uh, what are the tips that you would uh, suggest people coming from in a global standard? Yeah, yeah. And that's a great point where it's very specific to, uh, you know, the, the country you are in. I've seen, um, you know, uh, resume is in Canada being different from what it is in the U.S. Uh, India, of course, is, is very different. Um, I think for specifically to for the U.S. Um, market, it's very, very important to consider the simplicity of the resume, which people often um, kind of ignore. And we do that, I think, every day in some of our projects too, right? It It is so interesting to us that we kind of forget what's the bigger picture. Um, and I myself have been in that position a lot of times. So that happens with your resume also. When, when you put that much effort into 
saying that, you know, I have done this kind of hard work in my grad school. Let's just look at it. But for the for the teams, for the project manager and everybody, they are looking for uh, from from what I can see. And I've been in a position where, you know, we have interviewed people for um, my team. Uh, it's it's always better to have something more readable, more uh, simple for them to quickly, you know, maybe five to ten seconds of a quick browse would give them at least three important pointers from the resume to take up. Uh, and that's where I think, you know, links to the LinkedIn profile or a GitHub page or a portfolio is interesting because that gives them time to not just look at the resume, which, which is mostly just words. Uh, and rather than looking at it, you are looking at now portfolios, which are much more interactive. Um, so I think that's very important to keep in mind. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's true, Karan. Um, I, I think we, hiring managers and uh, recruiters, they look into how this person could drive value. So um, it, the resume points that you mentioned uh, definitely will help uh, people uh, looking forward to incorporate. And uh, in today's job market, what are the skills or qualities do you believe are essential for data analysts to stand out and thrive professionally? Um, sure. So uh, two parts to it, um, the technical skills and the soft skills. Uh, and again, I think LinkedIn is a perfect place for you to kind of just, you know, follow people for advice or so many people are sharing so much, you know, good suggestions on these. So what I'm about to mention is probably an amalgamation of everything that I have seen and, and actually work uh in in the real world so mm -hmm. the technical skills part of it is you know excel sql uh and any other bi tool like tableau or power bi is is a great way to fundamentally start your journey uh, in the analyst uh, you know position these three are powerful enough in some of my you know um uh, in in my recent in the current uh, you know role that i am in Excel has played a huge role for me in doing all of that initial work. So whether it's a senior analyst or a project manager, everybody feels comfortable with Excel. So I think people, again, like underestimate Excel a lot of time, including me again, uh, but but it, it has a lot of power. So on the technical side, I think just keeping it simple again, Excel, SQL, and, you know, of course, I'm, I'm a bit biased about Tableau. So anything like a Tableau or Power BI is very helpful to start off with. Uh, and there again, like, you know, so many things are going on in, in that space. Um, it's, it's better to just, you know, start off with something similar. In the soft skills space, it's, it's I would su su uh, suggest people to have much more focus on the soft skills because uh, tools, you can get all of these trainings and things like that. But your soft skills about how you can simplify, how you can tie things back to the business is, is probably more important. Um, maybe not for a very, you know, a junior analyst for, for the time being, mm -hmm. but if you showcase that kind of understanding that, you know, you, you are on to that path to understanding how valuable it can be for the business, it's always a good, you know, it's a green flag for them. So I think soft skills mm -hmm. is probably, I, I always keep that as a priority because everything else you will pick up maybe a month or a couple of months with the team. So making sure that that kind of goes through is very important in that conversation. Right, right, right. Thank, thanks a lot, Karan, for that advice. Because uh, like you said, soft skills are uh, something that a lot of people uh, are undervalue. And uh, it is something that we all overlook. Even if you go want to get into data science, people say, what, what are the technical tools we have to learn? So yeah obviously yeah. technical is important but more than that we need to also know uh, these soft skills so yeah, um, yeah. then you, you mentioned that you are biased with uh, tableau and uh, uh, the and and also i've seen your profile yet you are a certified uh, tableau expert uh, so uh, do you believe these certifications play a significant role in transitioning your career or uh, transitioning your career or to a senior role so what are your take mm -hmm. on that um yeah a great question on so there are two parts to it i see a lot of people saying that you know not j just having certifications will not help you uh which partly i think is right i agree with it uh but it's also a part of your development you know confidence developing in yourself in that skill 
Mm-hmm. So having, you know, just certificate will not be helpful. But I always suggest people to, you know, learn more and do certifications if that is helping you, you know, in that time to build more confidence. Now, only doing that and not building a project or a portfolio is where people miss out on. Uh, specifically to, you know, tools like Tableau, one of the things that I kind of also dug deep into Tableau was because it was a part of my organization at that point. So an official certification from that tool, I think, holds a lot of value. So that is definitely something that I would suggest people to do. You know, if, if Power BI is your tool of choice in the organization, by no means, you know, people should not do it. They they would definitely, you know, take out a lot of value from having those certifications. It kind of helps you, again, not just any with your promotions, but it also showcases that you are, you know, building that much, uh, you know, investing that much time in building your skills. Uh, yes, Karan. So uh, now that you you have your own experience of learning a certified course and then getting certified, but what are the other specific courses that you would recommend uh, in pe- into people who are looking into getting into data science? I mean, data analytics and uh, data visualization. Um. So I I have quite honestly not done a lot in the other spaces, but. I think Google Data Analytics certification is one thing that I came across with. It was, I think, on Coursera. Um, again, I, I kind of lean towards some of these more, um, you know, from organizations or some of these where are, there are, you know, very good reviews from Coursera or even just the, the tools which are, uh, you know, mentioning their own certification. I think Alteryx has uh, Alteryx Academy, which offers certifications and videos. So I, I'll always suggest mm-hmm. people to first go through that tool's website and then see if there is, you know, a good way to kind of get more information. But overall, as an analytics certification, I think, yeah, the one with Google or a couple of them that I have seen on Coursera, but I don't remember off the top of my head right now, are some of the good ones where I, I saw a lot of people, you know, kind of, um, having good reviews about those. So, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Thanks, thanks a lot, Karan. And uh, uh, so, with respect to job market, a uh, lot of people recently have been laid and a uh, and lot of posts talking about their experience through all of it. So, uh, how do you, what are your advice for data analysts who, who may be facing those uh, job layoffs and how can mm-hmm. they best practice in such, what are the best practices in such situations? Sure, sure. And I I went through that same uh, process on my end. I was laid off in December last year. So I've been in that situation, Uh, especially being on a work visa. I think uh, considering the the mental health perspective, it is very important. Um, It's very important to keep in, you know, open conversations with people around you. Um, I would definitely say uh, from an immigration perspective, a lot of start planning for the plan B on your end so that, you know, you don't, um, I mean, again, it's easier said than done. I was in that same situation where I had to start planning for a plan B uh, and not always thinking about, you know, it will be a bad option. Um, I always discuss it with my family around, you know, we can build something, you know, in a different place. So have that confidence in yourself. Anybody who is listening to the podcast right now, um, I think it's, it's very important to understand that if you have built something in 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 a place, you can start rebuilding in in a you know a different place too. So it's important to just consider where you are, and it's not a reflection of your individual abilities. It's just how the economy is and and a bigger part of it is where you are in that organization so if you are generating a lot of cash for the organization you are probably not going to be on on that side of the fence uh, but unfortunately if you are not um, then yeah it is it's going to come for you <laughs> so yeah that's that's the reality of it yeah i think money for organizations is important for the profit and things like that yeah yeah, yeah, that's true, Karan. And uh, I'm I'm glad that you mentioned uh, your story and uh, how people could learn from you because uh, job search is in itself a stressful thing and getting laid and then uh, getting to 
uh, and being on work visa, I can only imagine how stressful it is. So uh, uh, I'm I'm glad that you are uh, successfully into an organization now. And uh, so uh, so with all these things happening, right? Like data is an evolving field, and it's a constantly evolving field. So as a as a data leader or a uh, senior data professional in your uh, field, how do you uh, keep yourself relevant and up to date? Yeah, yeah, great question. So there are two ways of looking at it. Um, one is a lot of people, I think, uh, focus on the technical skills perspective, uh, which is kind of true um, in, in a lot of my discussions. I have understood that, you know, for example, uh, maybe machine learning, research, and other fields where which is much more technical, uh, it might be as important to keep up with the latest skills as it is important for you to tie the tie up to the business value. Uh, but from from my perspective in the analyst world, where you know I I always keep the business value at the first priority. Uh, I I make sure that wherever I am in a new team or in a new company. I'm quickly going to the point where the work will have more impact. I think that's the difference between, uh, you know, when you are senior analyst and you are, um, you know, just starting out is that we don't have that much clarity on, you know, what is it that I should take up? Um, when, when I'm starting out, everybody, when they are starting out, it's more about give me some good work. Um, and that continues. Yeah. But I, I have started having that discussion early on about, you know, how much impact and how much time it will save for us to do something, you know, A versus B. Um, so it, it's very important to do that, I think, in especially right now um, when, when, you know, a lot is happening around in the economy. And as I said, some of the other things are just luck, probably, uh, you know, you are, again, in a vertical where it's not generating that much profit. How, however you are positioning yourself, you might be up for, you know, the next round of layoffs, unfortunately. I, I know I'm being a bit pessimistic here, but it, it's the it's the reality. So, but, but yeah, we, we need to try our best to be in a position where it's having more impact in the business. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, now that you mentioned how to be how uh, impactful in your business, so how could, uh, can you elaborate on the intersection of being a technical data analyst and then uh, how to navigate or uh, be uh, in a discussion with your business stakeholders? So what could one do to uh, be in that domain experience? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, so, and you raise a good point about, you know, a technical data analyst and then maybe a business analyst in the team is kind of bridging that gap. Uh, so if if somebody is a technical yeah. data analyst and you are not expected to you know directly inter interact with the stakeholders or the clients, um, I think even then uh, having that form of understanding of what that business analyst is trying to do on his or her end will help you um, you know select what needs to be done. As I was just saying, um, you can do a hundred things in your time in a day but maybe only 30% of that is being you know, looked at or is having a larger impact. So that selection of doing you know, what, what needs to be prioritized is a very active discussion that needs to happen. Um, you know, I would say in some cases it would, may, might be needed to happen every day. Uh, so in, in some of my teams where I have been, uh, depending on where we are as a team, I have suggested people to meet every day because if there are more things to discuss, more confusion and, you know, more things to align on, uh, you can't have just a weekly discussion and then, you know, have people move in different directions. So I think it's a very important piece to have that kind of a communication. And that's where soft skills come, come in because everybody is, you know, having different priorities and then they need to collaborate together to, to move in a, you know, single direction in there. Yeah. Great, great. Uh... Yeah, that is a definitely a great uh, tip, uh, Karan, that you said uh, cross-collaboration and uh, communicating with uh, different teams will help you understand better than the, the smaller picture of the project. So yeah. um, the final question I have with you is that uh, as someone with a substantial experience, what words of encouragement do you have for those facing challenges uh, in their uh, data anal analytics career journey? Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, I think 
tying it up with something you're passionate about is is what will keep you interested in this field. Um, I saw a recent post about somebody who was looking at their Spotify data and comparing it with you know how how aligned it it with is uh, how aligned it is with the current trend and you know such an interesting topic and you have like everybody now has a you know a youtube history a spotify playlist or or maybe a you know a, a music playlist on some other platform but the the thought that somebody would go ahead and analyze it is where that analyst mindset comes in right um so i think yeah. con- constantly looking at things in in conversations and i would say just nerding out on things like you know can we analyze this what can be predict out of it mm-hmm. uh, so that's that's i think is a very very important point for people to keep in mind so that they are continuing in this journey to you know being more curious and uh, you know just just looking at you know all the fascinating things that are coming in right now i think chat gpt generative ai in general is is becoming so much more and you know so much of interest around it so i'm looking forward to it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah that's a wonderful uh, tip uh, continuously trying out things uh, and uh, it keeps your uh, interest uh, also up right so Uh, so yeah, that's all yeah. i have uh, karan um i i i've definitely learned a lot from you and uh, your tips and your wisdom on uh, uh, on your uh, job job layoff uh, stories and um, and how you transition from uh, being an um, master student to now where you are so uh, it's it's definitely a learning uh, learning journey for all our viewers and for me as well and uh, thanks a lot for uh, accepting the invite and uh, any few words to our viewers oh no yeah thank you so much neema for having me um, i i have always loved your linkedin post so it is great to get in touch and then you know sharing with the community here um i'm i'm definitely i think everybody who's listening to this i would suggest people to you know share more interact more and uh, don't be afraid of your opinions uh there are many things that everybody is thinking about but they are not putting it out in this world and i have found out it that's the best way for you to build that confidence let let people debate on that but don't feel like you don't have anything to share even if you have like a month of experience share it um that's the that's the thing that i would you know i'm suggesting everybody to do yeah yeah that is that was definitely an encouraging tip uh, karan so thanks a lot um... Thank you.